All right, what's going on people? Eddie Wynn back with another one and today I'm going to show you guys my top 10 sneaker pickups of 2014 and man, was it hard to narrow it down to 10 shoes. Uh, I looked at all my kicks for like a half hour and I had to figure out which ones were going to make the cut and it definitely was a little more time consuming than I thought it was going to be, but I've got a solid list here. I like watching everyone else's videos. It's cool to see uh, their different perspective on uh, brands and their personal preference and why they like different shoes. So this is some of my favorite, these are some of my favorite videos to watch, the top 10 lists that people have. So I'm happy to be able to do it for the second time. The first time I had some champagne, this time I just have iced coffee. But I'm going to do uh, top 10 apparel pickups later on today, hopefully, so maybe I'll have some champagne then. But I have 10 shoes to show you guys, so I should probably get right into it. So at number 10, I'm going to kick things off with the Ronnie Feig and Asics collab, uh, the Brazils. These dropped when uh, the World Cup kicked off, literally, and they uh, released alongside an all-gold Gel Light 3. A lot of people preferred that gold shoe. I thought these were just as dope, I mean, better actually, because I grabbed them instead of it. I think this colorway is really hard to pull off. The Brazil color tone um, is just something that you can't really wear with any other yellow or green or blue. So the other night I rocked these with like a black top coat and like a nice sweater and it worked perfectly so I'm really happy with these. Blue is one of my favorite colors on a sneaker but like I said it's hard to pull off. Some of my beaters are are uh, all blue but um, this is like just a beat up shoe like I said so it's nice to have something with a high quality um, pigskin suede on it so number 10 the A6 and Ronnie 5 Brazil. At number 9, I'm going to go with the Air Force One Wheat. The official name is Flax, but screw that. This is definitely uh, the Wheat Air Force Ones. This shoe kind of popped up out of nowhere. I think uh, Ronnie Five was actually one of the first people uh, to send a picture out on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And uh, people were like really excited about these. I had to get them. There was another hyped up release that day, so I was able to grab them off Nike.com real easily. And it's just a sick shoe. It's, it's a good alternative to wearing a Timberland boot, especially in the fall if you don't really want to wear something as big, but you want that color. These things were just money. This is actually the second Air Force One that I've got on my list. We'll show you what the next one is, but let's get into number eight. All right, so at number eight, there had to be a Saucony on this list of course, and this is the collaboration with Premier, the Life on Mars joints on the Shadow 6000 model, and these things were a straight up home run. My favorite uh, Saucony release of the year for sure. Definitely like this model a lot, super comfortable, and this reddish orange color, really unique. I like rocking these at night. They definitely stand out. There really is nothing I would change about this shoe. I wish that I grabbed the all red version as well, but this was the better of the two. Uh, if you guys remember that release, if you tried to grab it, it was pretty difficult on the Premier website. You were literally sitting there for two hours as the website, as the website kept crashing. Uh, it was nuts, but thankfully I was able to grab a pair and I'm happy with them. Next up, got some Puma suede, the mid tops in the all bluebird colorway. These things are crazy. Only 60 bucks, and if you followed my channel all year long, you knew that these were gonna be on this list. This is my second pair. I dogged up the first ones, and then I went through hell and back trying to find a second pair because they sold out pretty quick, and they were actually somewhat limited. But this shoe looks so good with a pair of jeans. I actually prefer the mid-top model over the low tops. It's just really uh, a nice shoe. It kinda has a high-class look. I've got the all blacks and all burgundy pair too, but this is my favorite colorway for sure. I don't wear this with any other turquoise mostly. Maybe a shirt that has like a little turquoise hit, but uh, for the most part, these do all the talking when they're on your feet. And like I said, 60 bucks, nice quality, can't pass it up. Puma, Bluebird, suede, what? <laughs> Keeping it moving, we've got another pair of Air Force Ones. These are actually highs, and this is the collab with Pigalle. I mean, this is like literally the most unique Air Force One I've ever seen uh, without going way left field, or that's right field, but you know what I mean, <laughs> left field. And uh, this shoe is just top notch quality. I really like them a lot. Nice suede, and the fact that they really reconstructed the Air Force One model, all this padding on the sides uh, around the ankle has been taken out and thinned down, and it just has like a, a high quality buttery leather on the interior lining. And look at this color transition from black to brown. It's almost like a bronzish color. 
just easily one of the most unique shoes that I have in my collection. The outsole um, is clear and you can see like basketball plays um, in the midsole area. So it's just just crazy like they really knocked these out of the park there's pigal um, logos all over the shoe they look great on feet you can take this strap off uh, you can't really do that with the mid so most of the time I don't rock the strap on there but um, if I feel like it I do and uh, yeah the price on these was a little crazy uh, they were like two something but uh, worth it surprisingly they were worth it a lot of times um, I kind of um, am hesitant to to cop expensive Nikes because usually the quality um, it just doesn't add up. But uh, these were great and I'm really happy to have them. So the Pagal Air Force One, hi. All right, so keeping it moving with some Nikes. We've got some Roshi runs. These are from the Gold Trophy Pack. Crazy. Easily the best Roshi runs that I've got. I don't uh, buy a lot of Roshis. I've had a couple pairs, but uh, for me, they kind of jump the shark where they have millions of colorways out there and they more so throw these like random options out there before they have clean colorways. I know that they've got like an all red, all black, all gray, but this one is just so money with the gold accents and the black on the medial side and then the white on the lateral. The, the soles get really dirty. I wear these all the time, but I don't even really care. Uh, supposedly you can wash these off in um, the washing machine, <laughs> but I'm not going to try that with these because they've got like this new buck uh, material on it and I know that that won't work out. But this shoe is super comfortable again and it's the most expensive Roshi run I've ever copped. It was over a hundred bucks. So that, that does not add up. The uh, $120 or $110 price tag for these was not worth it, but I still paid it and uh, I still like the shoe a lot. So the Roshi run gold trophy pack, bam. I don't know why I just said bam with like a Southern accent, but whatever, I'm, I'm still going with it. Uh, but this next shoe is, it's not a sneaker, but when I grabbed these, I knew that they were gonna be in my top 10 list of the year. And this shoe is so hard to pull off, but when you have it, when you're rocking it at the right time, it's just, it feels dope. <laughs> and they are a boat shoe from Sperry Topsider in collaboration with Extra Butter. And this is easily the craziest boat shoe I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I know that they put a lot of hard work into designing these. They definitely took a risk and it paid off in my opinion. There really isn't many other times when you're going to see people lining up for a pair of boat shoes. The entire upper has this blue water ocean print and it looks great. That, that's a really hard print to pull off and it looks really good on this shoe. They're super comfortable and then this outsole is like an aqua blue. These just kill it uh, with no socks on and just a pair of shorts hanging at the beach. But if you guys are going to be sticklers and say, you know, it's got to be top 10 shoes, then I'm going to go with the sneaker that released alongside it. And this is just as good, honestly. It, it's I love the colorway. It's got this saltwater washed canvas on it, so you can literally wear these things in the water if you want to, and, and they'll dry off and, and not get ruined. I wore these all the time this summer, and I always got compliments on them. Really great shoe. That I like the extra butter detailing on here, but yeah, definitely like um, the extra butter and Sperry collab. Let's keep it moving. Top three, let's do it. This next shoe would have easily been number one if the quality was a little bit better as far as the materials that were used. And they are the infrared sixes. And with that said, they still are number three on my list. If this was a nice uh, soft suede, easily would have been number one. And the infrared color, if it was a little less pink, I think that this shoe just would have been so much better. If it was nice like I wanted it to be, it, I would have gotten like, I don't know, maybe maybe four pairs, it's, it's that possible. But uh, I still owe you guys a story on what happened with my original infrareds. I've been waiting for this release since last year around this time. I think that they said that these were gonna drop on Black Friday, maybe 11 months in advance. It's crazy. I'm surprised we don't know what's dropping uh, 2015 Black Friday yet. It's crazy how much they build the hype on these shoes. And to, to me, it was somewhat of a letdown. I just really wanted this suede. I know I'm being super particular. I know when I buy Jordan sneakers what I'm getting. Most of the time I know the, the quality is not going to be good. I'm even skeptical for the remastered versions that are going to release. I'm sure there's going to be some craftsmanship issues and it, I don't know. It, it just sucks that they can't just give you a really nice shoe on an awesome design. 
but whatever, still top three infrared sixes. Coming in at number two, I have shown you guys this shoe briefly, but I have not rocked it yet, so I haven't done an on feet, and it hasn't been all over my Instagram and, and these other videos, but I did grab these this year. I'm waiting for the right time to break them out, and they are the all-black Balenciaga Arenas. Every time I look at them, I end up staring at them for like five minutes. I don't know why I haven't worn them yet, to be honest with you. I was planning on rocking them this fall, uh, and then I just never... I haven't done it. I've got the, the all red Coats monochrome pair that I usually go to if I want to um, have like a high end look. But I need to break these out soon. It's such a nice shoe. I really like the design. This slope right here of, of the tongue. Just such an all around really cool shoe. Worth the money in my opinion. Um, a lot of people think that they're overpriced. They're expensive being nearly uh, 600 bucks. But Super nice leather. I gotta wear these soon, that's for sure. But they are my second favorite pickup of the year, even though I haven't rocked them yet. So let's get into number one. Numero uno. This is a, a great pickup. I grabbed this early on in the year, I think February uh, of 2014. And I'm gonna give a little disclaimer here. I know the all red sneaker thing has been super popular this year, but I've been a fan of red sneakers well before this year. I had a pair of all red Josh Kalis DC shoes in eighth grade. Shout out to you if you even know who that is or what those are. But I remember the attention I used to get rocking those and I was like, you know what? I'm a fan of red sneakers from here on out. Since then, I've, I've had all these different types of, of red sneakers, but this is probably one of my favorites next to the, the other uh, Balenciagas I grabbed last year. And they're from Nike. Um, beginning of this year, man, Nike SB was just killing it. So I had to grab these, and they are the Year of the Horse, Chinese New Year, um, Nike SB Dunk High, and there's no complaints on this shoe whatsoever. They gave us a nice suede, which I'm happy about. I wish they used this suede on the infrared sixes. Like, why Why not? But uh, Nike SB tends to get a lot more love than Jordan does. But these gold hits really work well with the shoe, and then the outsole... Uh, got dirty pretty quick, but it does have these gold flakes on it. I'm not sure how this shoe is going to look once it yellows, but whatever. It, it was still worth grabbing to me. I rock these all the time. It's probably one of my most rocked um, all red sneakers for the most part, but just really comfortable. The Dunk High has been uh, one of my favorite models for a long time. I've always grabbed Dunks, whether they were SBs or just the regular Nike version. I, I can just rock these with jeans, no problem, or even high socks in the summer. So my number one pick was the Year of the Horse Nike SB Dunk Highs. That is it for my top 10 list. Thank you guys so much for the support this year. Uh, I kind of changed the direction of my channel a little bit. Prior to this, I was doing only like one take videos. And uh, this year, I'm like, you know what? I need to edit a little bit more and be a little more particular as far as the content I put out there. So, and it, it's benefited me a lot. I think I'm going to hit 30,000 subscribers soon. Just hit 2 million views. Couldn't be happier. Thank you so much for the support, guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new. Check the links down in the description. Leave a comment. Feel free to let me know what some of your top pickups were, the, were of the year. I'm interested to know. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.